There are some actions, some forms of behavior, which most people would regard as sin, sin, sin. I ended up trying to take my own life, cutting my wrists. I was found by a police car about half past four in the morning, frozen to death on the side of a road. They took me to the infirmary where I was sectioned. And eventually they put me in a padded room. And this guy, this nurse, put a tape recorder next to, next to this bed. And then he injected me and made me sick and vomit. And, and while that's going on, the tape recorder's playing, telling me what a filthy creature I am. And it went on and on and on for three days and three nights. And I banged on the doors and screamed that I was cured, I was straight. Should be made into crime, 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 crime. When the labour movement itself actually realised that those that were oppressed need to fight together, the, the solidarity of lesbians and gay support the miners with the miners strike. And at the front of the queue is the trannies, meaning Lily Savage, Regina Fong, people like this. Support the miners, you know, you can't, you can't not support people that are starving to death. You know, people that are, they were starving, they literally were starving. You either live in a free and fair and equal society, or you don't. The important thing is, is I think it's the connection gay people make when they see what has happened in their own relatively small community, that it's very hard not to connect it to the wider world of disadvantaged, marginalized people. Political activists actually turned, made other people feel uncomfortable. If you've got a singer or a comedian or a dancer on a stage, on a television show, uh, they got fans from all sorts of people, straight people, gay people, uh, and that's what breaks down the barriers. My belief that there's a sort of essential underlying acceptance of uh, homosexuality, it's something to do with our tradition of camp and, and all of that, and our odd uh, uh, cross-dressing traditions in the theatre. Well, the thing with comedy is there is a very, very strong uh, um, connection with gay humour within British comedy. All the things that, you know, were going to be a problem, I was told in my life, like my mannerisms and my voice, and things that might have got in the way of other careers, you know, somehow in comedy, uh, certainly when I've started doing it, these could be used to your advantage. Right, what sticky substance do you find down Daley Thompson's jock strap? I would say from like four or five. I remember watching Dynasty and fancying Bobby more than fancying Crystal. For me, my whole thing was to try and lay as many clues as possible. So, for instance, I, as a teenager, I was an actor, and then I started doing stand-up comedy, but I did it in character, and I played this character of this gay old actor, rather like the only gay in the village. Oh, bloody hell, Van Nuy, I'm so down. Here yeah, tonight is an out and proud gay man. <laughs> <laughs> When you can laugh at yourself, you can laugh with other people. At you, at you, at you, at you. No one's born prejudiced. They learn it. And they can unlearn it very, very quickly. We're all members of these minorities. There's no such thing as the majority. It doesn't exist. Not a majority of sameness. Thank God we're all different. As you look around here, you see every single face is different. I mean, it's wonderful, isn't it? And if every face is different, every personality is different. Every inside is different. And for goodness sake, every sexuality could be different. Be proud of whoever you are. Don't let anyone tell you how to live your life. 